recording. Recording now. All right. Um, so we are going to do the public key infrastructure or PKI lab. All right. We're not going to do all aspects of this lab, just really what I demo in class today. But it's really an application of um, you know, how RSA works in the environment of client and server archi architectures and looking at a certificate authority, right? So this is kind of bringing everything together. This also motivates, uh, I'll do a, like a summary at the end of SSL, right? And that's kind of the, the idea with the class. Okay. So this, so basically I'm showing you here uh, what we're going to be doing. So this is, I'll read through this description. Um, and then the problems, basically we're going to do this, this. That. This. All of that. Yeah, until that. So we're just going to do the first task, task three. And then this one, um, yeah, we're not going to do this in Apache, you know, in, in HTTPS. So we're going to do just the first problem. I mean, you can try it on your own, That's per but that gets more into like Linux, you know, configuration. So I want to skip that. All right. Yeah. And as usual, you will, uh, you need to submit a detailed lab report with screenshots to describe what you have done and what you have observed. Um, you need to provide an explanation to the observations that are interesting or surprising uh, and provide import code snippets followed by explanation. Uh, but, you know, there's not much code in this one. Use the tablet also. But yeah, I mean, we're kind of done. Now there's a few topics I should say about uh, cryptography that I didn't cover, right? Diffie-Hellman, so that's not something I covered. Uh, it's another type of asymmetric key exchange protocol. And elliptic curves, that's really advanced uh, topic. So those are two things I didn't cover, but otherwise pretty much you've covered all the the things that you need to have SSL and a safe crypt cryptographic uh, framework, we just didn't cover like other way. And you know, instead of RSA, elliptic, asymmetric, or Diffie-Hellman, or that. Does that make sense? So that's really, um, I wanted to state that. As you know, cryptography is, a, is an old field, right? It has been around for a long time. All right. So let me... Okay, um, but yeah, so today, so today is the start basically until the end of the semester of now applications, what, what I would call the third phase of this class, which is just, okay, you know, all these algorithms, all these techniques. Now let's look at applications. So obviously the first application that we look at is HTTPS. Okay, that's so that's really what we're doing today, getting a feel to that uh, for that. And what is HTTPS? It's just a protocol like HTTP. So if you know what HTTP is, right, uh, from your networking classes, then just add SSL to it. That's it. Okay. And so as I said, I will summarize what SSL is today at the end of this demonstration. And today we're just going over uh, and implementing this this idea of HTTPS, if you will. Okay, so also I remind you, I posted that article on quantum computing. Did any of you read that one, the link? None of you. Read it, it's, I mean, it's not gonna be on the exam, but it's a nice article. It's nice, you know. So read it and then someday when you see companies that actually develop quantum cryptography, you invest in them and then maybe become it becomes the next NVIDIA and you become very wealthy. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. So I'm going to, I'm recording. Let's go to the whiteboard and let's talk about what this lab is about. The gist of it.
So it's an application, it's HTTPS. So what, so in HTTPS, what do you have? You have a, you guys can see, you have a server. So it's HTTPS, okay? So exactly like HTTP, but we add uh, SSL to it. So you can even say HTTP plus SSL, where SSL is a pro protocol. So it's the SSL will be the framework. There's an actual protocol that is added. Okay. So the, the idea with this lab is we're going to have a server and we're going to simulate that server in problem one. So problem one, you simulate the server in a very easy way, just using OpenSSL. As it turns out, OpenSSL has its own server simulator just to make your life easier. So you can test out cryptographic things. Problem two, which we will skip, so we'll do problem one, would use Apache, which what is Apache? Web server. It's a web server for Linux, right? What made uh, Linux very, use, uh, very useful in the beginning. And so we're not gonna do this one, but it's basically because Apache requires, you know, some HTML and things like that. Okay, so this, this lab that we're doing today, Okay, basically we have a server, the classic server and client architecture. So this is the client, this is the server. And what are we gonna do? We need to establish a secure communication across the internet. So this is gonna be the insecure web, right? And so of course, if you're, if you're communicating through the insecure web, you know, you can't trust you know, sending your information. So you have to establish something. So basically it's the same idea that we've done before. Uh, we need to have um, communication here. Um, so we're gonna do what? We're gonna send a file maybe from the client, some file.txt, and we're gonna encrypt it, right? With symmetric key encryption, yeah. AES, something like that. But that AES key needs to what? it needs to be sent first. We need to establish the key exchange, right? And that's basically um, that what needs to happen first. So first you're gonna have the key exchange and once you have the key exchange, you use the encryption, okay? So that's kind of what we're gonna look at today. And of course, um, this server is gonna send what? Server pub, but Client is going to receive server pub and use that. But how does client know that it can trust this key? Because it comes from basically the insecure internet, right? So what do we need for us to trust server pub? What needs to yeah. happen? CA. Very good. Exactly. CA. So at the center of all of this is the fact that we need a certificate of authority. Okay. So since we're not gonna pay VeriSign to sign our key, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a self-sign key, right? So you're gonna create your own certificate authority in Linux, all right? And that's what the lab is about. Does that make sense, guys? Okay, and at the end of class, or this lab, sorry, I will summarize and conclude by giving you the description of SSL. Okay, all right, so any questions? All right, so that should be the description, so now, Let's go to the virtual machine. So I haven't started there either. Okay. Oops. I'm gonna go to the sure. Okay. And that. Okay, perfect. So let's start the VM. Okay. Still recording, right? Okay. All right, so let's start the virtual machine here. And we're just going to go through our problem.
So with this lab, I mean, my my I'll kind of I'll try to point out what's important. Just concentrate when you're doing this lab, because unfortunately, this lab requires a lot of steps to get to the end. And if you just get one wrong, it won't work. OK, so I'll leave one part for you to do uh, towards the end, but mo I'll do most of the demo. Okay, so let's log into the virtual machine. All right, so let's go back to the uh, bright space here and let's just read through the lab. So overview, uh, this is the PKI la uh, lab, right? So it's an application, as I said, of all the concepts a cell. Public key cryptography is the foundation of today's um, secure communication, but it's subject to man-in-the-middle attacks when one side of communication sends its public key to the other side. We talked about this, right? The fundamental problem is that there is no easy way to verify the ownership of a public key, i.e. given a public key and its claimed owner information how do we ensure that the public key is indeed owned by the claimed owner, okay? The public key infrastructure, PKI, is a practical solution to this problem. And as you guys well know by now, certificate authority. We've done a few of the commands before, but it was just kind of like general running the commands. Today, we're actually exploring a problem of certificate authority. So the learning objective uh, of this lab is for students to gain firsthand experience on PKI seed labs. Uh, PKI seed labs have a series of labs focusing on the public key cryptography, uh, and this is one of them. So, so basically, here you should get a better understanding of how PKI works, hopefully. And I think, yeah, I I I think this lab helps to understand how HTTPS actually does what it does. Um, so I, I like this one. So how PKI is used in particular to protect the web, how it's used against man-in-the-middle attacks, um, you know, et cetera. So some of the topics we will cover, uh, students will be able to understand the root of the trust in the public key infrastructure. So as you know, the root of the trust in the public key infrastructure is the CA, right? And that ha we've talked about that already, and that has to be trusted. And what problems will arise if the root trust is broken? Obviously, we don't want that to happen. A famous uh, root that's trusted is, of, of course, VeriSign. And we will see that today, um, where the keys of VeriSign are uh, on your computer, in particular in the browser. So this lab covers uh, public key infrastructure, PKI, Certificate Authority, and Root CA, the X509 Certificate, and Self-Signed Certificate. I'll demo all of this. H we're simulating HTTPS, of course, um, and I'm going to skip implementing Apache and all of that because uh, it's more like sysadmin stuff. And then man-in-the-middle attacks. I mean, to view this, we're just going to corrupt one bit. That's usually all we have to do, and we should be able to see the, the effect. Okay, so we're going to then, um, you can read through these, right? So basically the steps are becoming a certificate authority. How do we create that? Um, so we can read through that. A certificate authority is a trusted entity that issues digital certificates. You guys already know how to create digital certificates. We've done that in both Python with PyCryptoDome and in OpenSSL, right? So we've looked at those. Uh, the digital certificate certifies the ownership of a public key by the name subject of the certificate. So today we're going to look at how strict that can be. And this is a common process, common cause of problems in this lab, if you're not precise. A number of commercial CAs are treated as root CAs, such as VeriSign. 
So VeriSign is the largest certificate authority at the time of this writing. Um, so users who want to get digital certificates issued by the commercial CAs need to pay, right? Those CAs, so you would need to go to VeriSign, pay them. In this lab, we need to create digital certificates, but we are not going to pay any commercial CA. We will become a root, uh, a root CA ourselves. And you can, you know, if you're building an intranet, for instance, for the company that you work for, you know, you can become your own certificate authority for that intranet for instance. And that's kind of what we're going to do. Okay. And then use the CA to issue certificates for others, e.g. servers. So we're going to create a server using OpenSSL server simulation um, options. In this task, we will make ourselves a root CA and generate a certificate for the CA. So unlike other certificates, which are usually signed by another CA, um, the root CA certificates are self-signed. So this is an important aspect. Root CAs, actual ones, uh, CA certificates are usually preloaded into most operating systems, web browsers, and other software that rely on PKI. So it's basically like saying what? The public keys, right, of VeriSign need to already be in those operating systems, browsers, et cetera. Those can be, in fact, in there because um, they're public keys, right? And the public keys are available to everyone. So pretty much whenever you install Chrome or Mozilla or Edge, what's happening is you're also getting the public key of all of these certificate authorities and problem solved. You can now do everything that we've talked about in this course. Now, obviously, the CAs, um, they need to be very important, right? Uh, for Mozilla and Edge and all of them to incorporate. But we can also add our own. So if we become a if you become a certificate authority, you can easily add to your browser, right? Uh, or something, your key. So that's actually what we're gonna look at in today's lab. So root CA certificates are unconditionally trusted. Okay, so this is like, there, everybody knows who they are. It's probably governed by laws and things like that, etc. Make sense? Yeah, please. So on HTTP, there is no CA. In HTTP, there's no encryption. Oh, so that's just like not even part of it. Yeah, it's not encrypted. That's HTTP, HTTPS. Okay, so HTTPS can even happen without the CA. Well, yeah, because HTTPS is cryptography. Yeah, you're right. So when, when think about what you're saying, right? So let's say you're going to go to your bank, Bank of America, and you're going to like move money around. It's very important. You can't do that in an unencrypted fashion, right? You see that? So, so HTTPS has to be extremely secure. And so the protocol is very secure. And this, this is kind of what I'm demoing right now. And it, but it's very easy for all of this to happen. All that you need is the public key of the certificate authority in your browser. And then you can go to any place in the world, any website in the world, and trust that you have an encrypted connection. Why? Because when they send you their public key, not the CA's public key, but your bank's public key, what are you getting? You're getting it, but it's also signed by a certificate authority that is trusted, such as VARES. Does that make sense? Yeah. This is what guarantees the security of the entire internet. So they're constantly changing like what CAs you have on your computers and stuff. Because you're they, right. Yeah, you're. Yeah, yeah. They're all updating them. So they have a. We saw that they have a time limit. Remember. So that they issue maybe, it's also part of the business plan probably to charge more money, but they issue a, a, a period of time and after that, you got to get a new one. So it would have to be signed by various. I don't know how often, but yeah. All right, good. And this one, but yeah, that's really a important question in mind that HTTPS, HTTP, HTTP plus SSL. 
Not sure why this isn't working. Okay, there it is. One second, let's say. Now, I will say SSL is like a technique, a framework. And then in the OSI model of networking, there's an actual protocol. You know how you have in the OSI model, right? You have your network layer, right? And then at the very top of the application layer, you have this TLS, I think it's called. But it's basically just the protocol, net, the networking protocol that implements SSL. Does that make sense? The algorithm, the, like there's the math, then there's the algorithms, and then there's the networking protocol so that you build to have HTTPS. There's a port associated with HTTP, which is port 80, and there's a port associated with HTTPS, which is 443. Any questions, guys? All right. Yeah. Good question. All right. So let's go ahead. So now I'm, so you can follow along with the document. I'm just kind of, I have the document printed. So I'm just going to, um, I've read kind of, I think everything that was important to read and then everything else is just me demoing how to implement this and, and kind of give you the idea okay, of the certificate authority and everything like that. So let's go now to the virtual machine. Okay. I already created this demo CA old, so I'm just gonna ignore that one. So I'm gonna open up the terminal. Okay, and this is what you guys need to do, do for the assignment. Okay, as I said, you can submit this if you'd like today. Okay, all right, so I'm, the first thing you have to do, so you can read the instructions, of course, uh, but the first thing you have to do is to create a folder. So basically we're going to create like a certificate authority and that's just gonna be like a, a folder. That folder needs to contain some subfolders. It needs to contain some files and then everything is gonna be, we're gonna be generating everything there like the certificate authorities keys. And then we're gonna have a company called server, right? And that's gonna be the, like the Amazon. And then the certificate is gonna sign that. And then we're going to start a server and connect to it via uh, Firefox. Okay. So that's the idea. So I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to do is create um, a folder. I'm going to call it demo CA. Okay. So you can just hit enter. It's PWD. So I know where this is at. I'm going to CD into demo CA. Okay. All right, now I can do, let's do clear, PWD. All right, so I'm gonna need that path, okay? I also need to copy a file. I need to copy a file and that file is located in, in user lib SSL, okay? So this file is basically so that we can, it's the configuration file for open SSL. So I'm just gonna, there's like two things that we need to change possibly. In general, you you know, it, it, you don't change the majority of the file. It's basically just like a path. So I'm gonna copy that file into this demo CA, okay? Just so that you guys can tweak how open SSL behaves if you want. So I'm gonna do CP and I'm gonna grab it from user lib SSL and it should be called open SSL dot CNF. Okay, and I'm gonna copy it into this uh, folder. Okay. So I added the dot to indicate that I want it to copy from user lib SSL open SSL CNF. Into dot and dot in Linux just means the current working directory. Okay. All right. So as you can see, I already have the file and this is what you should all have. Okay. I'm going to do cat. Open SSL CNF, and you can see it's got information. I'm basically just going to change this. There's another parameter that we can change. 
uh, regarding the policy to make it very strict or not so strict. And what that means is when we enter fields like this is this company and and these little details, do we want to enforce all the fields or just certain fields, right? But so for now, this is the fine. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. And so I don't forget, I'm going to change this file. So open SSL CNF. I'm going to scroll down, uh, try not to change anything here because you could actually affect uh, break um, open SSL. We really just want to go here. Instead of having this like that, I have noticed when I've done this labs, uh, students have issues where of because of where they put demo CA. So it's better just to put the full path to it that you know avoids problems. So then that should be home seed. I put it on the desktop. So if you're not using the desktop, you know, you'll have to put in your own path. Does this make sense? So basically I'm just putting in the full path there. And that's the only the only change I made. Uh, so where all the files are going to be kept. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save this one. I can do PWD again, just to confirm it is home C desktop demo CA. Got it? So that's where we are. All right, so now ls-l. And now in here, we have to create, for this to work, uh, three folders. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to do mkdir certs mkdir crl and then mkdir new certs All right so this is just so that the certificate authority that we're trying to create will work our self-signed certificate authority will work you know if we have these three folders we also need to create two files um Pay attention to how I'm going to create these files because this is also something that usually causes this not to work if you don't do it right. Uh, we're gonna create a file called, oh yeah, we're gonna create a file called serial so you can do nano and then so, for the serial file, put a single number in string format, such as 1000. So we're gonna do serial. Getting this going. All right. And then 1000, just 1000 basically. Control X, Y, enter. And that should create, we have three folders the serial file and the open SSL CNF. We've already modified that one. The next thing you wanna do is you want to create a file called index.txt. And that's the last thing we're gonna need. For this one, we don't use nano because we need to create an empty file. And if you use nano, you would have to put in something. Even if it's a space, then it's not empty. So instead we can use touch and then just write index.txt. This just makes, oh, txt. This should make sure that our file is empty. Okay. So now we're ready to go. Um, and we have all the files and folders that we need to start the process. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do. Um, yeah, after we do that, we're going to look at the certificate authority. We need to generate a self-signed certificate for our CA. All right, so this will be basically the certificate authority. So we're going to run the command, open SSL, require dash new dash X509, which is the certificate protocol or format, dash key out. CA dot key. Okay, so you can see that CA dot key um, dash out CA dot CRT and then the config file dash config open SSL 
dot cnf. Okay, so that should be it. Uh, so the command and this uh, will allow us to create the keys for the certificate authority. So hit enter. All right. Now here, this is pretty important. Obviously, if you were doing this to keep it secure, you would use, you know, secure passwords for this process, a different password for this other process. You can do that if you want, but for this lab, it doesn't really. So I'm just going to type in one, two, three, four, five for every password. That way I'm not going to get confused as to which password I use, right? However, as I said, if you were doing this, like if they're paying you, that's your job, you know, use the appropriate passwords, right? Security, but here for ease of use and minimize errors, I'm just going to type in one, two, three, four, five, and then verify it one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Then you have to put in, so this is, we're going to do this twice, right? We're going to do this uh, for the certificate authority, and then we're going to do this again later on for the server. Okay. So some things don't really matter, but in general, you know, we've done something like this before. So US, Indiana, Yemen, P and W here, uh, organizational units, keep it blank, common name. All right, so I'm gonna point this one out, common name. This is really important when you're issuing the certificate for a web server. So for instance, the example that I can give you is, let's say you have Amazon and you have Amazon's public key, right? So when you do the certificate authority, uh, then when the certificate authority signs the public key of Amazon, in the certificate, it would say amazon.com. Does that make sense? That way, if it's not amazon.com that you're going to, like a man in the middle of, of an attack where they re do redirect you to some uh, bad site, it wouldn't work. Does that make sense? So it has to be that way, okay? So here um, you can do, let's, so, you know, let's type in PNW because this is the certificate authority, email address shouldn't matter, okay? And that's it. So if we do clear here, stash L, you can see that we have now, these keys, which it says CA, so we can take a look at them. For instance, we can cat CA dot key. Notice here it says begin and end private key. Do you guys see that? All right, so we have this information. So when we start the server, right, the server may need to have the private key. Right, because that's the server is like the bank, Amazon.com, etc. But it, when it communicates to the clients, it's going to send what the public. Right? Does that make sense? So it's everything you already know how to do, just in this problem. Okay. All right. So now we can proceed. So we've gen generated. Um, you know, the outputs are stored in these two files, CA key and CA cert. Um, CA key contains the CA's private key. And while CA.CRT contains the public key certificate. Okay. Makes sense. So we can, so if I do ls-l, I look at CA.CRT. Oh, cat, sorry. So this is the certificate for the public key. Okay, the self-signed certificate. All right, so now I'm gonna do clear. So the next step is now we need, imagine that now we have this, that's, we have a CA, Verisign, let's say, and now we are gonna have a server. We're gonna call it PKI lab server, but you can think of it as Amazon or something like that, right? So that's Amazon. So we are we created the CA and we are ready to sign digital certificates for our customers. So our first customer is a company called PKI Lab Server. Okay. We could also call it Amazon Lab Server. You know, whatever you want. It's just a name that I pick. Chase Bank Lab Server. You know, my 
name, bank, server, whatever you want to call it. What is really important about this is that the, the name that we put in there has to be spelled correctly and we have to match it exactly. Okay. So that's really the key. Okay. So this, for this company, so we're going to create, this company is our client and it's going to get a digital certificate from the CA, which is the thing we just created. So it needs to go through several steps, right? The first step is we need to, of course, generate a public and private key pair for the company, right? These are the things that are going to get signed. So the company needs to first create its own public and private key pair. We can run some commands and obtain these. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So open SSL, gen, RSA. These are actually for more security encrypted here. So it, this can use AES or DES. I'm just going to use DES 3. So open SSL gen RSA des dash out server. So notice that now I'm calling it server. What, what this means is like the Amazon client, for instance. That key. And then the size, of course, 1024. Should be like that. Okay. So hit enter. So enter a passphrase. So it's asking me to have a password associated with this. This would be a different password because now you're Amazon, not the CA. But again, as I said, to keep things easier to follow, I'm just using one, two, three, four, five. Okay. We can do ls-l and we can see we have server key. There we can do cat server key. Right. And you can see it says begin RSA private key. Okay. And we've associated a password with it. So obviously nobody can really get it without the password. Okay. So now let's go ahead and continue. So we generated the key. Now we're going to generate a certificate signing request. So what this means is now we're Amazon, the server, and we're going to go to the certificate authority and ask them for the certificate. So we need to generate a file um, for that. Okay. So, so once the company server or Amazon PKI lab server in this case has the key file, um, it needs to generate what is called a certificate signing signing request or CSR. Uh, the CSR will be sent to the CA. So this is the pro process in OpenSSL. And then the CA will generate a certificate for the key. Usually, and this is really important, although it's very trivial, uh, usually after ensuring that, that the identity information in the CSR matches uh, with the server's true identity. So usually this step needs to be done offline, right? So in person. Okay. And for the, this is where you need to be very uh, careful with your lab. When you see the common name in the CSR, make sure that's the name of the domain that you will be using. So amazon.com, bank1.com, and so on, right? Whatever it is. So in our example, um, Let's just use what's in the lab so I don't confuse you. So PKI lab uh, server.com. Do you see what I mean? It's really like the URL that we uh, have here, okay? Okay, so this is going to be uh, what we're gonna name it, okay? But we're not gonna do this right now. So let's go ahead and now issue the command. So I'm going to do open SSL request dash new dash key server dot py. Oh, sorry, dot key, not py. Server dot key uh, dash out. 
And now server.csr, the certificate signing request, dash config, dash config, yep. open ssl.cnf. Okay, so open this. Let me just confirm the command. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and um, generate it. So enter a passphrase for this. Again, I'm just using one, two, three, four, five for ease of use. Okay, so now this is really important that you do this correctly, right? So U.S. Indiana, Hammond, organization name. So this is like a tricky thing to understand, but think of the fact that this is a self-signed certificate, right? So you're thinking about it from the point of view of you're in an intranet of some company. So then PNW, right, is the certificate. So, you know, the internal CA, and then somebody from inside is also making that request, right? So then here you would want the names to match if you want it to be pretty strict, if that makes sense. Remember, we're kind of simulating, um, you know, what VeriSign would do with Amazon, right? So in the case of VeriSign and Amazon, we would want it to be not so strict. Right. So we can change that policy in the OpenSSL lab, or sorry, file in the OpenSSL.cnf file. There should be a place called policy equal, and it says policy match. And we can change that to policy anything in the OpenSSL CNF. So that's the other thing that we can change. All right. But to make sure that I don't have to do that, I'm just going to type PNW, and I think that should take care of it because the CA had PNW for the organization name and this has, so that's what I need. Does that make sense? Any questions on that? Okay, so go ahead and hit enter. Organizational unit, I think I left this blank so you can leave that blank. This here is where it's really important. So PKI lab server.com. That definitely you cannot get wrong, okay? So think of what you're gonna do later. You're gonna go to a browser such as Mozilla Firefox, and you're gonna type HTTPS PKI lab server basically, or .com, all right? And you're gonna go to that website. So that's, um, that's why this is really important, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna hit enter. Email address, I think I left that blank. Uh, please enter the following extract to be challenge path. Again, I'm one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Just so I don't forget what it is. And that should be it. Okay. Now that I've created the, the certificate signing request, I'm going to send that to the certificate authority and just, you know, sign everything, right? So generating the certificates, I'm going to go to... Uh, now this CSR file that I've created, which we can take a look, CSR, there it is, server.csr, right? We've generated that file. Now we need to, uh, the CSR file needs to have the CA signature to form a certificate, as you guys already know. So you would send this to a trusted CA for their signature. In this lab, of course, we own the certificate. And so we're going to use our own. But that's the process. Okay. You can start your own business right now of being a certificate authority. Are people going to pay money? <laughs> but you could, right? I mean, you could use OpenSSL and, and start a whole thing. All right. So, so let's go ahead now and do that. So that's the next command. So I'm going to do clear. All right, so now we do open SSL CA dash in 
server dot csr dash out uh, server dot crt dash cert ca um, crt dash key file ca dot key in the in the in the notes in the PDF you have this. This is not a value that you should be typing in the command line. It usually just means if you have something in the next line, so you can just ignore that one. And then you do the config file. So config config open SSL dot CNF. Got it. All right, so this is now, basically, we're almost at the end of this lab, right? Um, because now the certificate authority is actually generating uh, the digital certificate for this amazon.com, in our case, pkilabserver.com. So just checking. This is where if you mistype something and it doesn't match, it's gonna give you an error. All right, so open this. Okay. All right. Enter a passphrase for the CA key. One, two, three, four, five. And you want to hit yes here. And here you want to say commit yes. Okay. All right. So I at least I didn't get any errors. So that means that I entered everything correctly. There's no typos or mismatch. Any questions? Questions? All right, good. Oh, yeah, you do have a question. Yeah, what's in the serial uh, file? What's does in it matter? now? Yeah, does that matter? It's you you need to create it for this to work. Right, but what's in it? Uh you don't need what it it's probably like a log or something. I can take a look. So serial, it's got five now. I'll go back to that, but I'm let's just see what your question was, what's in it. So So I put in 1000 and now there's 1001. So it's keeping track possibly of the number of uh, of keys it has signed. I mean, it went up by one, so that would be my conclusion. You need you know what I mean? So as far as these files, how did I create them? Serial, I so I'll repeat this part, right? <clears throat> to create serial, I did nano serial, enter. I don't want to do this because I'm going to modify this. And I put 1000 in it and hit it and control X. Oh, okay. And then the other one was just touch. Got it? Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, sir. I'm sure that I think that error is related to the open SSL file. Can you open your open SSL file and go scroll down? When you look at this, what do you have there? Do you have the same thing as me? But you'd put in the full path forward slash home C <laughs> desktop dem <coughs> CA? Or do you have dot forward slash CA? I think I'm first yeah, that's probably is. So I think it's the um it's a path issue, it's not finding. Yeah, I just fixed it. Did it work? Yeah. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah, so that's um, that's why I put in the full pass. So there's no issues. Any other questions, guys? All right, great. So now <coughs> we have created um, everything. So we created a certificate authority. We created a company, um, PKI Lab Server. 
PKI Lab Server requested a signature and it's been signed. So now all of this, for all of this to work, right? We need a CA that is trusted, right? So what we need to do now is we're gonna use uh, PKI in the web, in, as a website basically. All right, so what do we need? PKI um, labserver.com is like amazon.com, right? So when I go to the browser, so let's do it like this. When I go to the browser, all right, um, if I go, if I type HTTPS, Seed Security Labs, it takes me to that website. It uses DNS and all of that, as you guys are very aware. So <coughs> if I do PKI lab, server.com, I get this because DNS does not know what that is. I mean, it's not a domain, it's not a, an actual website, right? But we can bypass DNS by just using the DNS that's local to this computer, which how do you use local DNS in, uh, in Linux? Uh, basically, you just have to go to the etc host file and that's it, all right? So I'm gonna go into, um, for this you need sudo because this is a, like an actual thing, uh, a security thing. So sudo nano uh, etc host, right? So if you don't remember DNS in Linux, we'll cover that if you're, if you're gonna take 372 next semester. Uh, but basically the first uh, DNS part is done locally in the system in this file. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. And you can see here, I have basically what? DNS resolution, right? So I have names and I have IP addresses. So all these IP addresses, for instance, are for uh, when we're using Docker containers. So if you don't know what Docker containers, that's also a topic in 372, virtualization. All right, but here we do have some, uh, the local IP, which is 127. Uh, the re redirection IP 127.0.0.1. So as you can see, I have already, when I was testing this lab before, I already typed in PKI lab server. You guys probably don't have uh, this one right in there. You don't have this entry, I assume. Yeah. So go ahead and type it up. So just type uh, 127.0.0.1 and then type PKI lab server.com. Does that make sense? And then when you do that, we will be able uh, to do resolution, okay? Any questions? All right, so once you've done this, remember you need you probably needed to open this with sudo, otherwise it won't save. So control X, oh yeah, I didn't change anything. For you, it'll be control X, Y, enter. Okay, so now I have it, but so I definitely have something there but there's nothing still, right? So I still don't have, um, I'm not finding the server. Now it is looking for it now. I just don't have a server for PKI lab server. So that's the next step. And I like this lab because um, it shows the how the key fits into the server. So that's why we're gonna use OpenSSL's uh, server flag so we can create just basically like a simulation of HTTPS, if that makes sense, okay? So we're gonna go back to the terminal. I'm gonna do clear here. And now I'm gonna do, um, let's look at, we're, we're gonna look at things from the perspective of server, right? So let's do ls-l. So server, these are the files of server, right? If you remember. So let's take a look at server itself. So server.key, key. what does it contain? Private key. Private key. Okay. The server should have its own private key. Do you agree? Amazon has a private key. And what does Amazon do with that private key? It keeps it private doesn't share it with anyone, but it is associated with that server. You guys see that? Okay. 
Then we're going to look at cat server dot CRT. And this is the certificate signature algorithm. RSA public key modulus. Do you guys see that? Everyone with me? All right. So server, we have the public key here, right? The modulus, et cetera, uh, exponent, et cetera, and the digital signature of who? Of the CA. Got it? Any questions on this idea? Okay. All right. So now we have the public and the private. The the public has been signed by the certificate authority. The signature is there. For us to verify, we we are basically going to verify this digital signature, right, on the other end, okay? All right, great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to combine the public and the private key just so that we can launch the, uh, the server, basically, okay? Now, remember, the server keeps its private key secret, but it's going to send us public key certificate to the client. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, oh, yeah. So let's go here, hit clear. So I'm going to do CPO. Let's do ls-l just so that these are the files. So I'm going to do copy server.key. We just looked at it, the private key, into server.pem. Okay? Then we're going to concatenate into ser into server pem server.crt okay the certificate itself again the private key will be kept secret by open ssl and the public will be shared so to do that we can redirect so this is saying uh, from linux and we're going to re redirect this output into uh server.pem okay all right so now we have this new file server.pem, and this is the file that we're gonna use to launch our uh, server, to simulate our HTTPS server. Got it? So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so to launch a web server in OpenSSL, instead of having to, you, you could also, as I said, problem two is, configuring Apache with everything. But we're not going to do that problem. Instead, we're just going to do it this way. So all we have to do is invoke OpenSSL uh, and do this flag, S underscore server. This will allow us to create basically a server that's listening on a port. Okay. So I'm going to do S server and then that dash cert and then server pem, all the public and private keys that belong to, to server pem will go here. And then we're just going to say that we want it to do WW. All right. That's it. Any questions? Now, when I hit enter, the terminal will just like uh, become a like an application that's running. So don't touch it. Just leave it run. And then we can open up another terminal if you need to type more commands, but don't like kill it because it, it basically is associated with a process that's running in the background and it's associated with a port number, which should be 4433. All right. So that's the port that we're going to be listening on because we wouldn't want to listen on port 443 if there's a web server already there. So we're creating an, like an additional port. All right. So go ahead and hit enter. Again, there's that password, one, two, three, four, five, accept. This is what you should get, okay? Everyone with me? If you got accept, it basically means that the server is listening. So now we do have a web server, okay? So now let's go ahead and um, try it out. We are ready to try this out. So now I'm gonna go back to the browser I had HTTPS PKI lab server.com. Now it's listening on a specific port, right? If we just do this, it's going to look for port 443. That's not Apache. So it's not open. So nothing's going to happen. Instead, we need to put in port 
four four three three. Like if you, I don't know if you guys can see, I typed colon and then four four three three. And now we should be able to find this application. So look at the screen and notice that something should happen. Do you see that? How many times does, does this happen to you when you're surfing the internet? Often. Often, right? This has happened to you before, I'm sure. Well, now you know what it means. It means that the browser does not trust the key. In theory, you if you were going to your bank and you get this, get out of there, <laughs> right? Because you, you shouldn't, uh, you know, it's telling you potential risk ahead. Now you have an option in advance to just say add exception, but just keep in mind um, that public key that they're providing for you is not trusted. Now, why, why did this happen? I mean, what's the underlying issue here? Because we started a server that had a public and a private key and the public key was signed, right? And we had a proper certificate and a digital signature. And yet, when we try to open this website in Mozilla Firefox, it just doesn't work. How come? Through your knowledge of cryptography, what's missing? Yes. Which key does the browser need? Uh, of of whom? Yes. Nice. Very good. Exactly right. Just like you would expect, right? In cryptography, that's exactly what is missing. Okay. All right. So we need to fix this problem. All right. So let's go ahead and um, solve it. So... Now, I will say make this comment because it's a good one. If this certificate had been signed by VeriSign, then we would not get this. Why? Because VeriSign's public key would already be in here. Okay? Very important. Unfortunately, the certificate of PKI Lab Server is signed by your own CA, which is represented by the file ca.crt. And this CA is not recognized by Firefox. So we need to either grab our phone, call Firefox, tell them to add our key, and then update software for everyone in, on planet Earth, right? <laughs> That's one option. Or we just add it manually to our local machines if we have administrator privileges. So we have administrator privileges for this one. So we need to load basically ca.crt into Firefox. Okay, so if I remember correctly, you go into the this icon with the three lines, and then uh, I think it's preferences. So click on preferences, and then privacy and security. This changes all the time, so I don't know if it matches your PDF. Uh, and then in here. Um, probably view certificates, this button down here. Yeah, there it is. And this is the certificate manager, okay? So the certificate manager basically should have public keys of the major uh, certificate authority. So for instance, VeriSign should be in here. If we look to the Vs, there it is. There's VeriSign, Inc. Okay. We called ours PNW. Okay. I think I had called this PNW already. So hopefully that won't give me a problem. I'm looking for the P here. There it is, PNW, so I had done this. I'm gonna add a new one, right? So you do, so what you should do now is import 
then go into the desktop, go to your demo CA, and it should be ca.crt, so this one, click on it, click open. You can say trusted CA, this CA to identify websites. Notice it could also be done for emails, okay? So go ahead and click okay. You can examine the CA certificate, right? You want to take a look. Gives you a nice presentable, you know, details and so on. Okay. All right. And then we are going to hit okay. okay. So let's go back to preferences. Oh, I was back there. Nope. Oh, preferences, privacy and security. Uh, where this uh, view certificates, PNW. All right, and there's two now. Oh, I use uh, PNW this time. Last time I used PKI Lab Server. So I have two in there, okay? Got it? Everyone with me? All right, so what I did is, you know, put the public key of the certificate authority, just like VeriSign has their key in there. So now you can hit okay. And well, I mean, let's cross our fingers. So remember, you shouldn't add the exception Right. Instead, now we're going to do the exact same thing. And it worked. You see that? And it's seamless, right? Because this is how the internet, it's not like when you go to Amazon or your bank, you get a message saying, hey, we're allowing you in, right? You don't know that something happened, yet you have a secure communication. Does that make sense, guys? That's it. So your lab needs to show this screenshot and you need to make sure that you show the risk one first and 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 I stress don't add the exception because if you add the exception you will get to this but it's incorrect right you should understand this concept so this is what you know you guys know how to use the internet and you've gotten pages like that before any questions all right so that's the lab Okay, so, all right, so now we're, I'm going to, th this part, so that's the part that I'm going to demo. So I've completed the, the part that I was going to demo, and then you guys just have a little bit to do. It's pretty much the same thing. We, we do all semester. You're going to change one bit of something, try it again, and you're going to see that just changing one bit breaks it. So that ensures that people can't modify, right? Modify this. Now, if you if you if you're thinking, oh, but someone can just go in to the web browser and add another VeriSign public key. Well, remember that you would have the the web browser locked locked up, right? So you know, security wise, so that people can't just add public keys and fool you. Okay. Does that make sense? All right, so let's go ahead now. Back, so I finished this. That finishes the demo. Now let's go back to the um, lab. And just notice here, it says, so this is the last part of it. It ends here. Testing your HTTPS website. Now point the web browser. The, here the lab uses something else, uh, but it's just a name. And basically, please describe and explain your observations. Okay, so you should describe what you saw and how it worked. Now, this part I leave to you guys to do. Modify a single byte of server PEM. You can just use the GHEX file, for instance, and restart the server and reload the URL. So answer the question, what do you observe? 
and then make sure you restore the original server PEM afterwards, okay? So be careful not to modify the file. Also be careful with the port number. Sometimes if you're starting the server and turning it off and then starting again, the port number 443 could become like um, uh, locked basically. So you may need to restart the browser or the, or the terminal or the whole system. All right, that's it. Any questions? Any questions on the lab? Nope, all right, perfect. All right, so this is the lab, as I said, I, as I showed you, I mean, these labs should will be easy uh, going forward because they're just applications of cryptography, right? So today we looked at HTTPS. I will conclude in the time that we have left with SSL. All right, just as I said, uh, answering formally now that you understand everything, uh, what SSL is. And then next week is the practical. So the scavenger hunt is next Tuesday of the week of Thanksgiving. And then after that, the final week of class is just a whole bunch of applications of cryptography for defense and, and you know, outside of like hiding messages. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead now and switch to the whiteboard. And we are going to define formally now OpenSSL. You know everything now, but you know, this is kind of the end. All right, so so uh, so we have SSL, right? Uh, secure socket layer. We've talked about this. We're going to uh, look at it from the point of view of this example. So we have the client and we have the server. Right. So this is the server. This is the client. So, oops. So basically, this is um, the browser you can think of. You know, in our case, the browser was good enough to have a client. Not sure. All right. So that's the client, and then we have in between communication via SSL, okay. So what is SSL and um, and what are certificates, right? This is kind of what we're concluding. Um, so we use a third party. So let's kind of summarize SSL. SSL uh, uses a third party. Uh, which is the certificate authority. That's the certificate authority or CA. So you've seen that demo. Okay. And this must be trusted basically. So how does the process work? Okay, so what are the steps of the process? Steps. So number one, um, a browser is going to request a secure page, usually through HTTPS, right? So you have a browser request request, uh, request a secure page. So via uh, 
a secure page. All right? So that's going to be your HTTPS call, basically. And we did that. Then the web server is going to reply. So that's going to be number two. The web server. The web server um, will send its public key. So sends its public key. public key, but also with its certificate. Certificate. Okay. Then what happens is now the browser, which we have seen, now the browser Uh, checks that the certificate was issued by a trusted party, right? That's what we did. So the browser checks that checks that the certificate certificate okay uh, was issued by the CA. by the CA, okay? And this is something usually VeriSign, but today we did um, our own certificate authority. It also checks, not just that it was issued correctly, but to answer someone's question, it checks that it's still valid. That it is still valid, okay? So you have a component there in the certificate related to duration of the certificate. And it checks the common name. So it checks the domain name, basically. The domain name. Okay. Then in, in the next step, once all of that checks out, assuming they've got the key of the public key of the certificate, the browser, if everything checks out, right, the browser now or the client does what? Uses the public key. So the browser now uses the public key. It uses the public key. And what does it use it for? It uses the public key. So the browser now uses the public key to do what? The signature. It already did that. So it did that in step three. Oops, sorry. In step three, the browser checks that the cert certificate was issued by the CA. It also checks that it is still valid and it checks the domain name. So now it checked all of that out. Step four, now that it checks out, the browser now uses the public key to do it. You guys know this. What do we use RSA for? Encrypting symmetric key. Symmetric key, right? Yes. So now the, um, the browser then uses the public key to encrypt to encrypt a, a, a random symmetric key. Symmetric key. Why the symmetric key? Because all the encryption is actually going to happen in symmetric crypto cryptography algorithms such as AES or DES, right? So it encrypt to encrypt a random symmetric key and sends it to the server. To 
to the server. So does it matter that the client generated the key, the symmetric key? Who's actually generating the symmetric key? Probably the browser, right? Do you guys see that? It doesn't matter. I mean, for security reasons, I mean, it doesn't really matter because everything is happening on, from the browser's end, right? And it can also send whatever other data it may want. So at this point, it can send other data as well, right? But in general, that you have that. And so now step five is what? Now the, the web server, the web server, does what? Decrypts, so the web server decrypts the symmetric key. Symmetric uh, key. How does it encrypt the symmetric key? So it, the web server decrypts the symmetric key using its what? It was encrypted with the public key, so it uses the right. of the server. Yeah. Right? Everyone with me, guys? So the, the web server decrypts the symmetric key using its private key. Okay, and then it uses the symmetric key to send whatever information at once, confident, you know. So then the next step is once this is done, now the server uses the symmetric key to communicate with the client. They have to establish obviously that they're using AES or something like that, but that's, you know, just metadata basically. Yeah, and then it sends, you know, whatever at this point it can send whatever information it wants to send. And of course, as you probably know, then on the receiving end, the browser or the client will decrypt all this data with the symmetric key, which it already has. Got it? Guys, that's OpenSSL, which you already knew, by the way. But that's kind of what it is. Okay, any questions? Some, com some additional comments for all of this to work. I will stress yet again, you have to trust a certificate authority. You saw it, it needs to be on the browser. VeriSign was already there. Firefox, I'm sure it's constantly checking things when it's doing updates, right? It makes sense to check that the, those keys are looking good, right? You have a browser, it's connected to the internet. Yes, do you guys agree? It's a software, a browser is software. It looks at the keys that it has. It looks at VeriSign's public key, and I'm sure they can check to make sure that those keys haven't been altered. Somehow. So that's an additional level of security you can have. And as you already know all this as well, the symmetric algorithm is much fa faster in doing its job than asymmetric. And this is why we use asymmetric or RSA for the key exchange, and we use the symmetric algorithm such as AES for the actual encryption. This you should know already as a rule, you would never send the private key to anyone. You keep it private, the RSA private key. And if you think about it, the symmetric key is basically just some random value. And every time that you wanna do a transaction, you can send a new symmetric key. Let's say you send 
half, you know, let's say there's a movie, right? And you divide that, it's really big movie. So you divide it into 10 pieces. So then you're going to send the first, you know, one tenth, right? So what do you do? Use RSA, send a symmetric key. Boom, send it. You're going to send the second tenth, right? What do you do? Let the server know, hey, I'm using your public key again. Here's a new symmetric key. And I'm sending the second tenth. And you keep doing that. So you can exchange because you're, you know, that in you know the the amount of data, right, that you're sending in comparison to the keys, right? So the amount of data is way larger than the size of the symmetric key. So you can just do that, take that hidden performance to have more security. And that way you can change the symmetric keys whenever you want. Does that make sense? And just constantly use random uh symmetric keys. So that's SSL basically, and that kind of we're at the end of you know the primitives and all the algorithms. All that remains, so I'll stop the recording at this point. Okay.